I really love curries, especially Thai green curries. Sort of complements seafood really beautifully in a whole array of vegetables. I also enjoy having the convenience of having a condiment or a store-bought green curry paste in the fridge, but not everyone can access those and it might be a little bit sensitive on your tummy in terms of preservatives. So if you can eat that and enjoy that, by all means. But if you've got access to all of the fresh stuff, I really encourage you to give making a green curry paste from scratch a go. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. The first ingredient, something you may or may not be super familiar with, is belachan. So it's a, a fermented dried out shrimp paste. Now I'm actually going to cook it in the alfoil, so I'm just gonna tuck it away. We're just gonna heat it through in our fry pan, exactly like that. And into that fry pan, I'm also going to put some cumin seeds. Just gonna toast them on the side there. Some coriander seeds and some white peppercorns. So if you don't want this to be really fiery hot, this is a really sort of um, an interesting heat if you haven't tried white peppercorns in this kind of a paste before. So you don't have to add as many as I am if you don't wish. So I'm just gonna toast that over a low heat until it's fragrant. Then we're gonna crush all of those up and add it to our paste. We have some beautiful Thai ingredients, some of which you may be familiar with in terms of flavor, but you may not necessarily recognize them to purchase. So we've got a beautiful piece of galangal here. It sort of looks a little bit like ginger and it does have some similar sort of heat to it, especially the older variety. So we're just gonna peel off some of these gnarly bits, give it a bit of a rough dice so it gives it a head start before we put it in the food processor. So our coriander root is so much flavor in this end. So what I really need to encourage you to do, however, is to clean it thoroughly. So you may need to peel it all apart. It tends to be grown in um, very granular soil. So you can get little bits of grit all up in here. So you might need to also give it a good brush, give it a good rinse and drain but there is so much flavor in there. So we'll use our leaves for presentation for a curry. We we'll use our stalk and our roots for curry pastes. You can also freeze this. So if you needed coriander leaves for a recipe, you can certainly just grab these out of the freezer to create a paste later. This is one of my favorite ingredients. I have a plant by the front of the door. I have a plant at the back so that I can just <laughs> creepily rub the leaves and get that beautiful aroma of these kaffir lime leaves. So I'm gonna give them a bit of a head start again. We're gonna use these as a garnish in a curry later. So I'll show you a couple different ways to use the kaffir lime leaves. So really vibrant in color, really pungent in flavor. I would encourage you where possible to use fresh ones. They grow quite easily, so it can't hurt to have a plant if you wish. Rather than using palm sugar or cane sugar, any of those sorts of um, blood destabilizers, you can use a stevia and or a monk fruit. I'm choosing a granular variety rather than a liquid variety because it's actually going to help as an abrasive to break all of these ingredients down. Next, got some garlic. Again, I'm just gonna give it a bit of a head start in the food processor by giving it a rough chop. All of that straight in. I can already smell the kaffir wine <laughs> and the galangal. So this just gets better each ingredient you add. So we have some green chilies. If you have access to Thai green chilies, they sort of look like the size and shape of a bird's eye. They're a lot hotter than these long, green chilies, but you can adjust the heat to your preference. Otherwise, we can make up the bulk of this with these more mild, long green chilies. So pop all of those in, bit of a chop to give them a head start. I'm just gonna check on our nice bit of heat in there, but not too much color. So it's releasing all of the oils from those seeds. If we had that Bellatron right open, it would be stinking up the place right now with that fermented fishy smell, which is so important in this recipe. If you were vegan or vegetarian, you can replace this very salty, fermenty kind of a flavor with some um, salt or some other soy sauce type products. Um, if you're a pescatarian, it's fine to use as is. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes so that we can prepare our lemongrass. So again, cutting it off about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half. You can then put that in a tray of water with some paper towel in and that will grow again. So get the best quality ones that you can find at the market and then give yourself a head start on growing some lemongrass yourself. Now we want 
about the bottom third is the softest sort of area. And you can save the rest of this for creating a really fragrant tea. I'm gonna split them down the middle first, exposing all of that delicious soft lemongrass. So you can see we've sort of got the idea of fragrance or flavor of citrus in multiple ingredients. We've got lemongrass, we've got lime, we've got kaffir lime. The galangal is also slightly citrus in some of its sort of higher notes. I'm gonna give this a rough chop. If you've got a really high powered food processor, you probably don't need to chop all of this as finely, but I'd say that this would be the more common one in most of your homes. So again, all into that food processor. I've just heard those seeds popping. I'm gonna take them off the heat. There'll be enough residual heat in that pan now. Now I'm gonna zest this lime. We'll save the juice for dressing our curry at the end. It acts as a preservative as well. So if you know that you're gonna prepare the curry paste on a Monday, but you wanna eat the curry on a Friday, you can put the juice in now to act as a preservative, or you can freeze it. This freezes really well. So put all of our lime zest in. Now we're gonna blitz it after this, but it may take a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of wiping down the sides to get a really good texture. So we'll take out our bella charm, release the steam for a second. Oh yeah, all those fish pasty notes have definitely got some heat to them. So we've got our seeds there. I'm just gonna break them up in our mortar and pestle. The aroma's being released because of that heating of the oil inside these seeds is quite phenomenal. All right. So not entirely down to a powder. Still a little bit of texture there. So all of that can go in. Let's get blitzing. I just wanna show you where we're at right now. So we've got a bit of a rough dice of all of those ingredients. You can see that it's very green in color right now. It would be quite traditional for us to add some beautiful turmeric, which is full of antioxidants and so many other good things for you. It will muddy the color. So if the green, this vibrant, bright lime green is important to you in terms of appearance, I would leave this out. You could grate some fresh over at the end or you can pop it in there now and you'll sort of have a, a slightly muddier version in looks, but not in flavor. So the flavor will still be fantastic. I'm gonna blitz this a little bit further. So I'm quite happy with that paste consistency. I've just pushed it down from the sides a couple times throughout blitzing just to make sure that there are no big chunks anywhere because that would be not so pleasant to eat. And we also don't want any particular ingredient to overpower one another. We really want this to be sort of this one amazing flavor that you sort of, it hits you in different layers as, as you take it into your mouth. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of coconut oil at this point which if we added it too early, it actually wouldn't be able to break up all of those ingredients. So this will also aid us in cooking and we are gonna add some coconut cream to a curry later. Fairly traditional at that point. So it's really all we need. It's really loosened it up. Now, even though I talked about having a really smooth paste in terms of using a really high speed food processor, if the texture was really important to you and you really just wanted the flavors without having to chew through anything, I know that um, we've got galangal in there and lemongrass in there, both of which are quite fibrous. You could cook this in the coconut milk later and then strain it. So you've got a really, really creamy, smooth curry base. Another option for you to to do at this point would be to add about 250 grams of cashews that you've soaked overnight and then you've kind of got a Thai pesto which you could use as a dip or you could put over some noodles or some zucchini noodles if you wanted so this becomes quite versatile you can freeze it in little jars which is exactly what we're going to do so that I can show you how to use it later but you could use it straight away as well so I really hope you'll give a green curry paste to try in your own homes. <laughs>